Hey guys, what's going on? Lethal Flux here, and today I'm bringing you a Shadal deck profile. Um, I haven't done any videos lately. Um, <laughs> you guys know the story. Um, I don't know, guys. I just I get busy. Sometimes I don't feel like uploading, and uh, uh, the RJBO or Zero. I don't know how you pronounce it. I can't remember how many times you've said your names at the beginning of videos, but for some reason I cannot remember it right now. Um, <laughs> he just commented on one of my videos and said, "Yo." I need more lethal deck profiles in my life. What's up? <laughs> so I decided I'd shoot him a, or shoot all you guys a, a shot all deck profile that I actually recently got first place at a decently sized tournament at. Um, there's a lot of these things. Uh, there's a lot of things in this deck that are pretty standard. Um, one thing I will say is I was playing um, pre October ban list, um, so. Um, I was main decking two Super Poly and two Soul Charge. Uh, in this deck profile, it is October ban list, um, so there isn't two Super Poly and two Soul Charge, which sucks. Um, Soul Charge I can live with, that's fine, I'm completely happy with that going to one, but um, Super Poly, I just loved Super Poly, man. Super Poly is just an amazing card. Um, I I loved Super Poly. Um, sad to see it go to one, but I, I will say it definitely needed to happen, because that card is nuts, um, especially in the mirror match, it's just unfair. So. Um, there's not much else changes in the deck. Um, there's a few cards that I am playing, um, that may or may not surprise you, um, and that I'm not playing that may or may not surprise you, that you're like, oh man, why isn't he playing this, or why is he playing a number of this? So, um, without any further ado, I'm gonna stop talking and let's get into the deck profile. So, of course, we're gonna go main deck first. And, uh, to start off the main deck, um, I've got, I played three Shadal Dragon. Um, I personally think it's the best Shadal card. Um, even if you have to set it, um, it's pretty good. Sometimes people will think it's um, other cards like Falco or um, Hedgehog. And they'll just attack right into it. And uh, to be honest, his flip effect is really good because I think right now in this current meta, I, we actually don't know what the meta is going to be when... Um, <laughs> when Cliff Wards come out, it's going to be a whole different story. But right now, where uh, Satellar Knights and Shadals are running rampant, I think returning things to the hand and, and or the uh, the extra deck is really, really key. Um, especially the Shadal Fusions to make sure they don't get the uh, Shadal Fusions back. Um, so And popping back row is really good, but it's kind of scary right now with Sanctum running around. And yeah, I do think Dragon is... He's my favorite. My favorite of the Shadals. After that, we run two beasts. Um, I don't like three. I just don't. This guy just swarms my hand for some reason. And um, he's really awesome and stuff. But <laughs> I'd rather have Dragon in my hand and, and not him. And um, sending him's really awesome. Flipping him's really awesome. Um, but to be honest, if I ever send to the grave, I'm usually going Squamata um, Falco. So I can have a you know, a play, um, but after that, if I have my graveyard set up, I'll be going uh, Beast so I can draw two and discard one. For what he does for the deck, he's actually really, really good. His effect for the deck is um, is the best, I think, but um, I just like Dragon better because of the, uh, the, um, the stopping that it does for your opponent. Uh, after that, two Falco. Um, I like two. Um, I did try one. I don't like one because... Sometimes having this guy in your hand isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, and sometimes you do want to draw him so you can summon him and uh, synchro away your dead mathematicians that are on the field just chilling there with nothing to do. So, so yeah, I do like Falco. He's good. Um, Foolish Burial of the deck, two Squamata, um, pretty self-explanatory, sent to the graveyard, send a card, or send a Shadal card from your deck to the graveyard. Really good. Usually go uh, Squamata Falco or Squamata Beast or Squamata Dragon, d depending on the uh, the situation. Uh, two Hedgehog. Been thinking about cutting this to one. Doesn't really do anything. Um, it gets you Shadal Fusion and that's cool and everything. But once you have the one Shadal Fusion out, um, unless that Shadal gets returned to your hand or banished, um, you're usually going to be getting the Shadal Fusion back. So I've been thinking about cutting this to one. Uh, not completely sure yet, but. Maybe. Possibly. Uh, that's it for the Shadal Monsters. After that, I chose to run Mathematician. Um, I'm trying to prepare as much as I can for next format when uh, 
I forget what it's the Earth One Shiki Naga, Shuraka Labalaka Naga, or whatever it's called comes out. Um, because this is an Earth, and um, this is going to be great for uh, things like Shadal Fusion and uh, possibly Super Poly if you have it at the right time. So, this can be used for materialized whatever the hell it's called. Um, I haven't really, uh, I've, I've got an idea for um, the next profile um, using plants and shadows. <laughs> of course it involves Globebulb and uh, Lone Fire so when those come out you'll you'll see that. But yeah, Mathematician's really good. We are running a little bit of a Liceborn engine here. Um, we, we go to Lila, to Raiden. Um, these really help get your plays going and um, just milling anything is great except for if it's spells or traps. <laughs> but um, I really like this because it helps set you up for your chaos monsters that you do have in the deck. And um, it, this should all monsters get their effects as well. So it's really good. I like the little Lightsworn engine. Uh, two white dragon and one black. I really, I really, really tried to go two white, two black, but I just cannot stand drawing black because <laughs> it's really hard for me to get a light in the grave sometimes unless I have, you know the Raiden or you know if I'm milling effectively um, it's really easy for me to set the graveyard up for the whites because a majority of the uh, deck is dark so and if I open um, Sinister Shadow games I can just send from the deck to the graveyard to set up for these guys if I open these um, and then after that after these guys go I then have fodder for that which is good um, but I, I it was really really cloggy for me playing two black two white for this build anyway. Um, and for the last monster is one BLS, of course. What's uh, what's the deck without BLS? This card should have got banned. <laughs> that card should have got banned, but whatever. I'll play it as long as it's legal. I love that card. On to the spells. The obligatory triple shutoff fusion. And one super poly. Because, you know, it's super poly. The deck still needs super poly. Um, like I said, I am sad to see it go to one, but it definitely needed to happen. Um, yeah. Self-explanatory. Shut off Fusion Super Poly. <laughs> uh, onto the one ofs. One Foolish, one Mind Control, one Soul Charge, and one Regeki. <laughs> I'm strictly playing this for locals, guys. Um, don't go to regionals and use this deck and play Regeki because the majority of the time it will be ineffective. Um, simply because... Shadal window isn't affected by it. all the Shadals will get their effects. Shateller knights don't really give a shit because they're just gonna special summon everything back anyway. And um yeah, I'm I'm playing this strictly for rogue decks, for things like uh Constellers and Mermails that are a lot at my uh, my locals and uh Madolce and stuff like that. So that's why I'm playing the Regeki. Um if you were to cut Regeki out of the situation, I'd probably put in like, I don't know. An MST or a Lance or something, <laughs> but Regeki probably is not the best choice for um, regionals or anything like that. But locals, it's great. It's great for locals. I will say that. Onto the traps. Um, just two Sinister Shadow games. Uh, I read Patrick Hoban's article and uh, realized why this card is really good main deck to just at two because early game it's really good to have it. Um, late game, it, it doesn't really. I mean, if you have set Shadows, that's awesome, but. It's kind of dead late game because you usually have your whole graveyard set up within three or four turns of playing the match. Um, your whole graveyard, your entire graveyard is usually set up. So there's nothing... I mean, there's, sometimes there's things to send with Sinister Shadow games, but usually it's just... I don't know. It's good at two. You want to open it, yeah, but two is just the perfect number. Um, two is definitely the perfect number. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever go three in the main deck. Uh... Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Um, this sets up your graveyard. Yeah, they don't get their effects because you, pay, you have to pay cost for Wing Blast. But it does set up your graveyard for when you draw those beasts in your hand and there's no way to get rid of them. Um, and like I said, returning things to the deck and or hand is key this format. So the Shadow Fusions do not get their effects. Don't know how it's going to be next format. But right now, as it stands, um, I thought this was a really good tech choice for this format. Double Breakthrough skill, good against the Mirror Match, good against Artifacts, good against Stellar Knights, good against a majority of 
things right now. <laughs> so well, that's why I chose to play Double Breakthrough Skill. Um, I really like Trap Disruption. I don't know if any of you guys know this, but I really like Trap Disruption. I really like Back Row Hate, which is probably why I play the Three, ra uh, the three Dragon. Um, this is really, really good against Artifact Sanctum. And in testing, I would just get wrecked by Artifact Sanctum when I was trying to make a play because they just disrupt your plays, and it's really stupid. So... <laughs> Wiretap is an awesome choice. I think this format people, some people like trap stun, but the thing about trap stun is, it, you can chain to trap stun and it doesn't get rid of the the Satellar Nova Alpha uh, counter spell. And if they activate Satellar Nova Alpha and tribute their Satellar monster or whatever, you can wiretap it. And I'm pretty sure that's how that works. <laughs> so that's always good. Um, I just really like wiretap this format. I think it's a great card. Like I said, for the fifth time probably, don't know about next format, but definitely like it right now. Uh, and then for the one of the one warning and the one compulse, um, once again, returning things, really good. That's it for the main deck, 40 cards exactly. Let's move to the extra deck. Um, double Winda, card's amazing, self-explanatory. Uh, actually opted to play Triple Construct, I think this card is... Just ridiculous. This card's absolutely broken. It's a catastrophe for special summon monsters. Um, <laughs> they, a lot of the times, you're sending your graveyard, and it's just overwhelming, like to your opponent when you're sending all this stuff and getting all these effects just due to shut all construct. And then when they get rid of it, you get the shut all fusion back, just so you can make another shut all construct. <laughs> so it's a really overwhelming card for your opponent to try to to try to deal with, and um, yeah. So that's it for the Shadal Fusions, because that's all there is right now. Um, I do play the Raiden and the, uh, the level 4 dragons, the white and the blacks. Um, so level 8 Synchros is a must in this deck right now. Um, this is a really good card to actually counter Shadal Construct, because it uses the effect to destroy. So you can actually use um, Stardust Dragon's effect to negate the effect of Shadal Construct and destroy it. Um... Which is okay, I mean, they're still going to be getting the Shadal Fusion back, but whatever. And then Scrap Dragon is just... It's a Scrap Dragon, it's there. Um, you can blow up your own shit to get its effect. Um, to get your monster card effects that are set or whatever. And uh, then blow up your opponent's stuff. So yeah. Uh, for the level 7s, one Arcanite, one Black Rose. Um, I feel like these are needed in the deck. Um, <laughs> it's, it's way too easy to make. It's just amazing. Level 6. The one Goyo Guardian. It's... It's Goyo. Really good. <laughs> and for the level 5, Armadis. This card is like auto win against. Uh, what is it? Um, what is that freaking deck called? You guys know what I'm talking about. The. The. The Worms. <sighs> what is it called? Awkward pause. Um, you know what I'm talking about. It's also good in the mirror match. Yang Zings, that's what it's called, damn it. I know you guys are probably yelling at the screen, Yang Zings, it's called the Yang Zings. <laughs> but yeah, this card's really good in the Yang Zings against the mirror match and stuff, so yeah. Uh, for the XE monsters, one 101, one Castell, one Diamond Die Wolf. Fun fact, I've never, ever played Exiton ever in any of my extra deck. Ever. I've never played Exiton, I don't know why. Um, I've definitely had the opportunity to get a hold of it, especially now since the reprint came out. But for some reason, I've just never opted to play Exiton. I, I don't know why. I just never have. Um, let's go on to the side deck. Side deck's really, really good. The side deck is very important. <laughs> There's some things that I wish I would have in here, like uh, Flying Sea. Flying Sea is amazing. Um, that's the only thing I wish I would have had in here. Other than that, mm, I think this side deck for me is pretty solid. Uh, one Grand Mole. A double Max C. Um, Max C is good against the Teller Knights. So... Uh, and that's kind of a matchup that I, I really don't like is the Tellarites. I know you summon Winda and it kind of restricts what they can do. But for some reason, the Tellarites just play really, really aggressively. Uh, double Effect Veiler, double DD Crow, um, so Tellarites, Falco targets. Um, once again, the Tellarites <laughs> for the Effect Veilers. And for this is for Falco targets, Altair targets. Um, also, with Wol Wolf Bark being at 3, Effect DD Crow is going to be a. Pretty decent side deck card for Fire Fists, and uh, so is Effect Veiler, and Max C. So, yeah, that's it for the monsters. Um, for the spells, you have the two MST. Um, it's MST, you know, it's good. 
and I don't main deck it because um, Sanctum. I don't think I will main deck it, deck it because Sanctum is still at three, um, and I'm assuming the artifacts are going, are going to be splashed in everything until they get hit. So come on, Konami, hit them, hit them Sanctums or Moral Tax, whichever or. I'd be happy with either. <laughs> um, two pulling the rug once again. Um, <laughs> so Teller Knights. Um, I actually sided this in against some Adolches for the Magellan, and uh, it worked out pretty nicely. Actually, I actually got it off. So um, yeah, pulling the rug is great. I love pulling the rug because they never see it coming. Um, if they MST, if they like blind MST and they hit a warning, um, that's cool. Because um, if you have a set pulling the rug, they're never going to expect that this card is going to be set. So they're just going to summon into it, and you're going to flip it, and they're going to be like, what the fuck is that? Why'd you side that? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that's pulling the rug for you. Um, double light imprisoning, uh, so Teller Knights. Um, I like siding this card, and I don't like siding this card, because this really conflicts with Construct, but a lot of the times I can play around it. So, yeah, light imprisoning for those rogue light sword matchups and rogue um, Constellar matchups, but mainly for the uh, so Teller Knights. So, yeah. And after that, um, double chaos trap hole. I really, really like this card. It banishes. The shadows don't get the fusion back, and it's when a card is summoned, um, negate the summon of it. So it's really, really versatile this format against Satellar Knights and Shadows. And it does work on light and dark monsters. So you do have to pay two thousand, but you get to banish the monster and negate the summon, which is really awesome. <laughs> I just love this card. I love, I love this card right now. Um, really good against uh, the Burning Abyss as well, because if you can banish the Dante and the Dante won't get the effect. So, uh, yeah, Chaos Trap Hole. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, guys, that was my uh, should all deck profile that I've been doing fairly decent with. Um, I do hope you guys like the deck profile, and I will be going to Locals this Saturday to get more decks for you guys and profile them, so be sure that you are watching out for my channel and all the content that I'm going to be bringing you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome video, guys. This has been Lethal Flux, and uh, peace out.